Welcome to this video on the Poisson distribution from Statistics 2 or S2. Now we've already looked at the binomial distribution and this was where we always had a fixed number of trials with two possible outcomes for each trial which was success and failure and we counted the number of successes. Now with the Poisson distribution we're going to look at a different style of problem. Now, with Poisson, events must occur independently, singly, in space or time, and at a constant rate. However, these things I will talk about in the next video in a little bit more detail. For this one, we just want to focus on our initial formula. Now, I'm not going to go through actually getting the formula, but uh, what I'm going to do is jump kind of straight in with what we're looking at. So we have a distribution and our distribution this time, if I look at X being distributed, so we're going to use PO for Poisson. So that obviously, you know, binomial we use B, normal we used N, but we don't want to use P because P is probability. So PO for Poisson. And in this case, we're going to get a single parameter, lambda. Okay? And this is because the mean is lambda, and the variance will also be lambda. And if you have a little look in your book, it goes to this with uh, an, ex an example with actual values to show that working on the mean and working on the variance give you, gives you the same value. Now, in terms of the formula that we need, it's quite straightforward. So the probability of x equaling x is equal to e to the minus lambda multiplied by lambda to the power x over x factorial. So this is the formula now for those individual probabilities much like the first video in binomial distribution this will be the formula for the first one and then later we will look at cumulative and sets of tables as well and one final point just like the binomial distribution poisson distribution is also discrete data as we are always talking about events that happen singly in time Okay, so it is different if you remember from S1, that normal distribution was continuous data, but so far in S2, our binomial, which we've just done, and now the Poisson are both discrete data. Okay, and it's important to remember the differences. Here we have a straightforward example, and to do this, we're just gonna use that formula. So for part A, We've got probability where x equals 3. Now remember what I've said previously about always writing down the formula or any formulas that you use. Because by writing them down each time you solve a problem when you're practicing means that these formulae, they stay in your head then when you, you actually come to need them. You know, you know, you don't actually have to revise them or learn them because if you've written them down so much, you just remember them. Now, in this case, obviously, we're just gonna substitute in lambda 3.1. So minus 3.1 times 3.1 to the power three for our x over three factorial. Remember, you've got the factorial button in your calculator, but this is three times two times one. Now, putting that value into my calculator, we get 0 0.223676 and so on, which is 0 0.224 to three significant figures. Now, part B, we've got probability where X is greater than or equal to two. So remember, this is discrete data. So I can write this as 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 1. Because greater than or equal to 2 is, you know, 
1 minus everything except for essentially 1 and 0, isn't it? Which is what we're looking at here. 1 minus the probability that x equals 1 minus the probability that x equals 0. Okay, of course you can add these two up and then take away that value from this one as well. So we've got 1 minus. Now, when x equals 1, we're going to have e to the minus 3.1, because that's my lambda, times 3.1 to the power 1 over 1 factorial. Minus e to the minus 3.1 times 3.1 to the power 0 over 0 factorial. Now, of course, these are just going to be the value 1, so this is what I'm left with now. And it gives me a final answer of 0 0.815298 and so on, or 0 0.815 to three significant figures there. Finally, part C, we have that this x is greater than 1, but less than or equal to 3. So the same as what we did with the binomial, First, make this an equals in terms of my inequality. I always want the, the equals there. So now we've got that x is greater than or equal to 2, less than or equal to 3. So what we're really looking at here is that we're looking at the probability where x equals 2 plus the probability when x equals 3. So all I need to do is work those out. Obviously, we've already worked out the 3, haven't we? So I just need to work out the 2, which is e to the minus 3.1 times 3.1 squared over 2 factorial plus my 0 0.224. Of course, I'm going to use the full value of this in my calculator, not the rounded version. And this gives me 0 0.1. Four, four, zero, one, three, eight, and so on. I'm just going to pop my actual answer here. So this equals zero point four four zero to three significant figures there. Just so I can fit it all on nicely on one screen. So here, what I'm going to do is show you how to do it in the calculator. So again kind of like we did with binomial, into our settings. This time, Poisson PD. We can go with, let's do a variable, which is just a single option. This one we want when x equals 3. And we know that Poisson, uh, sorry, lambda is 3.1. And then I hit equals, and I get my 0 0.22, 367, which you can see is the same as our value for our A in our question. Now, I won't bore you with parts B and C, but it's just the same process. Use the same way in which we I'd already showed you how to work on parts B and C, but you can just use your calculator to get the numerical values instead of the table. Now, in this second example, we don't know lambda, but we are given some additional information. So we are told that the probability when x equals 2 is equal to the probability when x equals 3. So if I think about my formula, my formula is e to the minus lambda times lambda squared over 2 factorial. And this is going to be equal to e to the minus lambda times lambda cubed over 3 factorial. And what I want to do here is start by first multiplying or cross multiplying with the 3 factorial and the 2 factorial, however you want to think about it. If I multiply by 3 factorial, it's 3 times 2 times 1, and this is 2 times 1, so there is going to be a bit of cancel in there. So this is going to give me 3 e to the minus lambda, lambda squared equals e to the minus lambda, lambda cubed. Then divide by my e to the minus lambda, and that will go. So I got 3 lambda squared equals lambda cubed. 
Now, I could do this a little bit, I suppose, better way of doing these kind of things um, and factorise out, but ultimately, the lambda's not going to be zero, is it? So in this case, you know, we can see lambda squared equals zero, so lambda equals zero, and this one, like, lambda minus three equals zero, lambda equals three. And this is obviously what we need. It's not going to have a mean of zero and a variance of zero when we are collecting data. Okay, this value of lambda is always going to be positive. As essentially what you will see as we go through these videos, that this lambda is the rate in which something occurs. Okay, so obviously zero is just meaning nothing's occurring. So we wouldn't use this one at all. Hopefully that's not too bad. It's quite straightforward today. So I'm just going to give you three quick questions. And as always, I'll go through the answers at the end of the video. Very straightforward question here. I'll do this in fast forward mode. 